In this video, we'll be looking for page setup for printing. The various topics are like margins, we have orientation, we have page size, uh, print area, break, background, print titles. Let's see that one by one. Now, if you see, I have some data given here, that is date, region, purposely I've taken date, text and numbers. Now, the very shortcut thing, if you want to print and if you want to see a print preview, the shortcut from a keyboard is Control P and you can see that's a print preview which is given on the right hand side. Now, that is the page setup which is given by default for printing, right? Now, but the, what is the longer method to go to this page is, I'll press Escape from my keyboard. Now, if you want to go to their longer method is, you have to go to File, then you have to go to this option as Print. Once you click on Print, you'll get the same page when I use the shortcut. So, that's the page given here. Let's see that one by one. So once you click on this option, you see there are various options present here. Let's say, let's see the easiest one. If you see the second last option, it says custom margin. Now if I click on this custom margin, now if I say I want the normal margin, you see the gap between the first column and the page and here also it changes. If I click on this normal, you see the gap changes. Similarly, if I click on this normal margin, if I select this wide, it changes. Similarly, the third one, if I select narrow, you see the gap changes. So this is about the margin, how we can get up. Now, next one is the letter size or you can say page size. If you see there are various type of page sizes given here, that is A3, A4, A5, different page size available. So the, the normal and default page size is A4, A3 is a bigger page, you can say, and A5 is a smaller page. So right now, if I click on this A4, you see the page setup changes, I mean the page size changes. Similarly, if I go for the other size, let's say I go for A3 page size. A3 page size is... Okay. So I'll go for this A3 page size from here. Page size A3. Alright. So if I click on this A5 page size, you see the page size changes and very less data is occupied. Similarly, if I go for the same A4 size, more data is occupied here. So page size also you can change according to your convenience. Secondly, if you see there's a portrait orientation, there's a landscape and there's one more portrait orientation. If I select landscape model, the width of the page increases. If I click on this, the width of the page increases. If I select this portrait orientation, the height of the page increases. So this way, whatever requirement is there, you can choose the page orientation. Next, I have collated and uncollated. What exactly is collated and uncollated? I'll just tell you. I have 42 pages. If you see there, are, I'm on the first page of 42nd page. Out of 42 pages, if I want three copies of this 42 pages, how do you want the copies? Like first page, second page, third page or, so if you want only page wise, copy wise, so you can select this option as first page, second page, third page, first page, second page, third page. Now, if you do not want that kind of option, if you want every first page of every copy, so what you have to do is first page of all the three copies, second page of all the three copies and fourth page of all the three copies. So this way you can get page wise, I mean page of every page, first page of the copies this way. So that is what you call collated and uncollated. Now, if you do not want 42 pages, if you want just seven pages or 10 pages, so you can give the page numbers. I want the page number from 7 to 15, 7 to 20 and so on. Next one is, I have right now, um, these are the options available. Let me check how many sheets I have. I have total number of sheet is only one. See if I have that is one sheet page setup. What I'll do is I'll create here one more page. I'll type here page setup to. I'll change the sheet name as page setup to. And I'll just type here something tutorials point. tutorials point. Now I'll go back to my page that is the first page. I'll go to this file print and now if you see there are 42 pages it says print active sheets. My active sheet is the first sheet. If I click on this book and if I say I want to print entire workbook means all the sheets I have. So if I click on this entire workbook now if you observe 42 pages have been changed to 43. So if I click again to that active sheet it changes to 42. It changed to 42. So worksheet and workbook, that means workbook is a collection of all the worksheets. Now the third one, if you see there's a print selection. Right now I have not selected anything, but if I select some area, let's say this way, I'll press escape. If I select some area like this, and if I say I want to print only selected region, so I have to go to this file. Yeah. 
I have to go to this file and then I have this print and now I'll select I want only print selection. So this area whichever I've selected will only be get printed here. So that's, uh, that's all the options available here. Next is I'll just remove this. Yeah. Next option I have I'll go to this file print and uh, I have something known as custom scaling. Now what exactly is custom scaling is first I'll say as print active worksheet custom scaling right now if you say as no scaling that means it will not change it will by default give me the uh, fitting of this. So if I select here fit sheet on one page so what will happen is all the pages all the pages if you see now out of 42 pages they have converted into 5 pages. So they are trying to fit all the you know data into one page itself but which is not actually absolutely visible if you see the first four or five lines are compressed into the small format. So this way if you want to compress and send some information you can use this option fit sheet on one page similarly fit columns on one page and uh, next you have fixed rows in all the pages. So right now there are not many columns so it didn't uh, change any option here. So that's no scaling means print sheets at the actual size so no changes will be made here. So I hope you have understood these are the options available here. Next one is how many copies do you want? You can see there is an option given as one copy. So if you want to increase the number of copies, I will just click on this plus or above sign. So number of copies will increase. So that many you will get. I have 102 pages. It will keep on adding some pages over there. Next is I will just remove it. Yeah. Next is how do you want the uh, print of this do you want as a print as a PDF so I'll just click on this option once you click on this option yeah so I'll go to this place yeah I'll go to this place as file file print and next I have on this drop down yeah so on this drop down if you see there's given as printer so if I click on this option there are various options available one is do you want to send this to a fax do you want to create a PDF do you want to send an email or different options? So if you see there's a printer, there's a fax option, there's a print to PDF and so many options available. Right now what I'll do is I'll say as Microsoft print to PDF and this will be converted to a PDF and I'll click on this option as print. So once I click on this print, it will be converting to a PDF and it will ask me a question. Do you want to save print output as and I have to type the name of the file and the format of the file is given as PDF. So I'll type some name. Let's say I'll type here Excel to PDF and I'll click on save. So I'll click on save on the desktop and save. So it says 102 pages are getting printed and uh, the file is done. So I'll go on the desktop and open that and I'll open this. Yeah. Right. So now if you open this, I, that Excel sheet has been converted into a file that's a PDF file and which is saved on the desktop. So you see that's a file which is converted. Now you can work on this file, you can import, export so that nobody can disturb this file. I'll just close this and I'll come back to my Excel file. Yeah, that's a printing one. Now so we have seen how to go for this option. Let's say I'll go to file and I'll go to print. We have seen all these options which are available. That's a place, that's a print preview which you can see. But I'll show you the long cut method in case if you forget the shortcut method that is control P by opening this entire area. But I'll give, I'll give you a long cut method. You have to go to this page layout. You see there's an option given as margin. So we have seen all this margin. If you do not like their margin which is by default given, you can go to this custom margin. So once you open this custom margin by default, I mean it will give a dialog box. It says what is the left margin, what is the right margin, top and bottom margin. So four options they have given to change everywhere. But extra, extra options they are given. If you want to change the header size, the position of header and position of footer, so you can change the position from here. If you observe my data is on the top left, right? This top left. What I want is I want the data on horizontal and vertically in between. So I've got the data horizontal and vertical in between and you can click on this print preview. You'll get the same option again to this place. So I'll just go back and uh, I'll go to this page margin. So from here custom margin you can change all the options which are available. Next is page orientation which you have seen landscape and portrait two options. Next is page size which you have seen A3, A4, A5 different page size. Next one is I have the print area. Suppose I want to set this print area. So what I can do is first is I'll select some region. So I'll just click on this option. I'll select some region 
and I'll say yes, I want to set this as print area. So when I go to printing, this area will be the first preference which will be given. Set print area. Now this area is chosen for printing. How do I check it? I'll go to file, I'll go to print. And if you see the only region which I've selected, that area is selected for printing. So now I, I don't want that. I'll just go back and I'll say as cl a clear print area. So the print area went back, right? Next is if I want to give a page break, right? If I want to give a page break, suppose I have, yeah, let's say I have how many rows? I have total eight, let's say 12 rows. Out of 12 rows, uh, after 12 rows, I want a separate page. How do I uh, break a page? So I'll keep my cursor on that cell from where I want a page break. So wherever my cursor is there, above that, the entire page will be created separately. So once I go to this page, I, I'll click on this insert page break. So if you see, there's a thin line which is generated and the page will be broken, it will be given. How do I check whether actually the page is broken or not? I have to press Control P from my keyboard. So if you see the first page and uh, I'll click on next, you see that's a second page. So I'll just go back, that's the first page. So that is how you can, you know, uh, break up page here. That's what you call page break. Now, if you don't want, you can just remove the page break, remove page break. That is one option. Now, second one is if you want to put a background, background to your Excel sheet. Right now, you might be seeing this, there's no background given. So I'll just click on this background option and I'll say as from file, on the desktop, I've saved some image file. I'll just open that image file. The image file is background image one and I'll click on insert. That's a PNG file. So once I click on insert, you see the background of Excel has changed. Instead of white color, now you can put your company logo or you go for some presentation. It will look you know, better. So this is a bit dark. My data has been hidden. So according to your convenience, you can change it, the color and all. And also if you see there's a grid lines which are seen. If you do not want that grid lines in the same page layout tab, you see there's a grid line, you just click on this view option. So grid line also will go away. If you want that grid lines, you can bring it back. Grid lines, options, yeah. If you do not want the background, so what you can do is a simple option, you just click on this delete background and the background will go away. Delete background, so background went away. Now, now there's one more advanced option here. I'll show you something. I have this data, there is only one column heading, but if there are almost thousand records, thousand records at the bottom. So when I go for printing, if I press control P, you see there's a one column heading which is repeated. If I go to next page, I have no column heading. If I go to third page, there's no column heading. How do I bring the column heading again and again back? So that is known as print titles. How do I bring it? So I'll just go back. Which title do you want? So I want this title to be repeated every now and then. So I'll go to this page layout tab and I'll go to this print titles. In this sheet, it will ask me, which rows to repeat at the top. Now I know which rows are to be repeated. So I'll click on this option and I'll select this 13th row. So once I click on 13th row, this row will be repeated again and again. And I'll just click on this print preview, not okay. I'll just click on print preview. This was the first page which was given. Let's see the next, next second page. I'll just click on this. So you see there's one row which is repeated, second, third, fourth, fifth, so on. So you see the column headings have been repeated every now and then. So this way, when you go for, you know, printing purpose that can be used. Right. So these are the options available. I hope you have understood. We have seen margins, orientations, size, print, area, breaks, and we have seen the background and print titles. So I hope you have understood for this video. Thank you.